Many people never achieve their goals because they have too many toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. And you have to have goals outside of your comfort zone that will challenge you because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And you've got to have a mentor who's experienced, who, who's been there, done that. And, and as a result of that relationship, because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, Muhammad Ali said, I'm the greatest, but he never won a championship without Angelo Dundee. And Michael Jordan never won a championship without Phil Jackson. So you've got to have someone that can see something in you that you can't see, that, that, that can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. Dr. Norman Cousins, he wrote a book called The Biology of Hope. And he talked about the fact that when something happens to you, you don't deny it, you defy it. And I was defiant that I'm going to beat this, I'm going to handle this. That there are people who many times when something happens to them, that they embrace it from a place of fear and it takes them out. And Elsie Robinson said, things may happen to you and things may happen around you, but the most important things are the things that happen in you and you have to stand up inside yourself and deal with it and handle it. The easiest thing I've done was to get out from under the labels and to live the life that I live. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do it. You live in a dominant culture that is designed to destroy your sense of self and your belief in yourself and, and you have to learn ways in which you can begin to connect with this power that you have within yourself to handle where you are. The key is to be constantly in a perpetual process of discovering the truth of who you are and fighting constantly to look for ways in which you can escape the inner conversation. I speak to audiences around the world and I, and I train speakers as well and I, I tell them that when you speak that there's, a, there's an objective that you want to achieve when you speak to an audience because how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. So you as a speaker, when you speak in this program, when people see you, what you do is distract, dispute and inspire. And many things, they come back, you know, negative thoughts and, and how you feel about yourself, they don't die. They, they come back once you stop doing the maintenance work on your mind, listening to motivational messages, going to seminars and workshops, spending time quietly listening to the still small voice within. Uh, who am I really? Is this really me? Am I giving my best? Uh, am I just reflecting what's around me? Because all of these various things affect how we show up in life. And so having a strategy to continuously uh, find ourselves reaching higher. You weren't going in that direction, but you unconsciously did it because you've done it so many times that many people, because they're not making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to think outside of what life has thrown at them, they end up doing the same thing over and over and over again. Einstein said that thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. And so through relationships, through reading, through studies, through goals and dreams beyond your comfort zone, it, it allows you to begin to live out of your imagination as opposed to out of your history. D Disney said, the imagination is a preview of what's to come. And so as a kid, I, I dreamed a lot. You're living a life that will outlive you. Just think about the fact that this program has given a lot of people hope and there's hope in the future. It gives you power in the present. Every 40 seconds, someone commits suicide. But because of something you say or some guests that you've invited and, and as they share their story, you interrupt that story of being hopeless and powerless and, and not wanting to be here anymore. And because 
They took the time to watch. You create an experience. Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. And so at the end of the program, at the end of one of your presentations, there are people who, because of you, their lives will be transformed and they will become a, a pencil, as Mother Teresa would say, in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter with their lives. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. If you want to become successful in life, young man, but number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. You earn within two to $3,000 of your closest friends. I found that out, I left all my bro broke friends. I said, y'all gotta go. And the third thing he said, develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said, those are three major things that you want to work on that will liberate you from living in Liberty City, living in poverty and over town. It will help to escape out of where you are right now because I see you watching me and I know you want more. I can see the hunger in your eyes. You get hungry by finding something that's you. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You gotta find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you, that you have to work on yourself and you have to have an unstoppable attitude and no excuse and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people, when I'm giving presentations, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Those experiences of, of going after goals that's beyond your comfort zone and having relationships that will challenge you and surrounding yourself with coaches and mentors who can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself because you can't read the label when you're locked in the box. And so those experiences, they challenge you to go to that next level and continue to move forward in your life doing new and exciting things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you when you live a hard-centered life deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. You know, Horace Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And so my goal is to make a, a major contribution to humankind. That life is an adventure and it's going to be a challenge and get ready to, because you're gonna fail your way to success. You're gonna get slapped around by life. And don't spend time complaining about it and telling everybody 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. Uh, I wanna close the loop on the books really fast. So give me two or three books that you think everybody should read. The Road to Your Best Stuff by Mike Williams. I wrote the foreword to that. Live Your Dreams by me is a very good one. Another one that's a little known book that people don't talk about, it's by Robert Collier called Secret of the Ages. That's a book that really inspired me, that Mr. Washington gave me, Secret of the Ages. The Secret of the Ages is that you have the power to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Don't underestimate yourself. You don't know enough about yourself to become a cynic. And so you've got to challenge yourself to access that power that you have within you. You're more than a conqueror.